Today we're going to talk about how to connect, set up the firmware for the TMC2209 with UART and sensorless homing. This will be done on the Big Tree Tech SKR Pro version 1.1. So to set this up, I'm just going to skip through the steps because a lot of people like me to just get to the point. So currently our X stepper over here is set for spy communication. So in order to configure this correctly, we need to pop out these steppers and then set it for UART. UART is this black jumper over here for these pins. I'm going to place the jumper right here then push it down. Then we're going to take our stepper and as you can see the pins already dictate where it's going to go according to here. So I'm going to drop this in place and then push it down. Now I've added the actual cooling pins to it and you may want to run it with a cooling fan in order to keep it cool while printing but I'm just showing you how to set it up right now for this particular device so I'm gonna actually just connect the DuPont connector over here for the stepper as soon as I can get it in there and I'm going to connect the actual USB in a moment after I connect the power which is currently disconnected so I'm gonna fold this back so you can see what I'm doing I'm actually going to place this in for the motors so I have to slide this in place like so so it's actually voltage on top, and then it's ground on the bottom. So I'm going to tighten this down. I'm going to do the same for the ground side. And then I'm going to do this a second time for the actual board power. So I have to connect another one over here. So I'm going to slide these in, and it's the same ordering where positive is on top, being voltage, and then negative as on the bottom, which is ground. So I'm going to tighten this down, and I'll do the same for this one. So I'm going to fold this down so that I can protect myself from not actually enabling it, but I'm going to leave it clicked up a little because of the shadowing from the light. So the next thing that we need to do is actually load the firmware. So we're going to make firmware changes. So we have to pop out the actual USB. Well, it's going to display as an SD card actually in this case, but we're going to place it in here. So just so you know, I'll put a link to this device for actually connecting to your USB so you can load on your SD card. And that'll be an Amazon affiliate link. And also, no one's paying me or sponsoring me to do this tutorial. So let's get over and see what's going on for VS Code. So the first thing I actually want to show you is the drive that I've just popped in here. And notice how it says firmware.cur. That's current. That means that uh, that's what we currently have on the drive. That's going to change in a few moments in VS Code. So inside VS Code, I'm going to go to the Explorer, then Open Folder, then I'm going to go to my Downloads folder, and then I have my unzipped Marlin 2.0, which I have to go two folders deep, then select the folder. Inside here, I'm going to click on the Marlin folder, then I'm going to go to the Source folder, the core folder then boards.h. Inside boards.h I'm going to search on skr underscore pro and here's the version of our board so I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to go minimize these folders real quick go to configuration.h search on motherboard highlight the ramps board and paste that over that then I'm going to change the serial port to negative one and I'm going to search on the A4988. And so that'll bring us to our X stepper. I'm going to remove the comment. 
I'm going to copy the TMC2209 and I'm going to paste it over the A4988. Then I'm going to scroll down and show you something real quick. These are the default settings for default access steps per unit. These are going to be kind of important in a moment and I'll show you why. So let me go over to configuration advanced.h and search on 800. It might take a second for me to get here, but this is the actual X micro steps. So right now it says 16. These are going to be proportional to the values over here. So if this changes to, we'll say 160, which is double, that means that we have to then double this value. So this is going to be 32. Now, if it were to go to 160, we were to take that to 320. We'd have to do the same over here. They're interconnected. So that's just something I wanted to show you so that you understand how that works. The other things will be dependent on your hardware. So for instance, root mean square for your setup, this may vary depending upon the actual hardware you're using. But you can always change this to 750. That's what I like to do. It's just a little bit lower than normal. And then we can calibrate off that later on. So I'm gonna search now on sensorless homing. But before I do that, I wanna do TMC debugging. So it's TMC underscore debug. And I want to enable this so you can see what's going on. So I'm going to remove the first thing that we have to remove in order to use TMC debug for these commands. And then I'm going to go and find the second one and actually remove the comment for that as well so that we can use it over here. Next, I'm going to search on sensorless and we're a little too far so I have to go back up because it's actually up here and what we're looking for is this define sensorless underscore homing so we've just enabled that but it's set up for spy communication which would be others that's why this is eight but we want to change it to what the value approximates for this and it's 125 is where I found a good happy medium for the high and low for sensitivity up here for this part. So after that said, I wanna show you something a little bit extra and that's sensorless homing again. So down here, there's something called sensorless homing where it will home and then back off. So this is a cool setting that I discovered a couple of weeks ago. Normally when it homes and it's uncommented, it will move off two millimeters from the home position instead of zero. So I'm going to exaggerate it to 10 so you can see it. And that's 10 based on what the current calibration might be. In this case, we don't know what it is. That's a whole separate subject in itself. But this will be the approximation of 10 millimeters when it's moving. So to prepare the actual platform io.ini, we have to change our default environment. Right now it's set for a different chipset, so we need to search on skr underscore pro, and here is our default environment. So I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna scroll all the way back up, and I'm gonna change the Mega 2560 by pasting it right there, and then I'm gonna click build. But usually before I click build, I like to do a clean, and then build. This may have errors in it. If it does, usually going to the first error will fix it. But I've also noticed that you can also compile a second time sometimes and it will clear the error for you. So in a moment, we're gonna need to search for our build, which is gonna be under .pio. Then it's gonna be in the build folder. Then it's gonna be in the skr folder, if it builds correctly, which it almost looks like it's going to do. So what you'll need to do is right click on this and you'll need to go to reveal in Explorer and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. So if I go over to my desktop on my computer, you can see right here, this is the folder that I just opened. 
and inside here is firmware.bin. We need to put it over here so that we can update our firmware. So you're going to right click and you're going to say send to the USB D drive. Now I'm going to remove this and actually place it in our configuration. So what I need to do is actually pop this out. So before I pop this out, I want to check something. So go. So now that I have it out, I'm going to place it inside here and to power it. We're not going to be using USB power, we're going to be using direct power as you can see over here, our direct power. So I'm going to connect that. Then I'm going to actually connect the power and this is going to take a moment to load. So you'll see a flashing light in the center. But while that's uh, loading, I need to check something for you. So that should be loaded right about now. I'm going to show you in Proner Phase what this actually looks like in a second. I just have to get it up so you can see it. So give me a second to actually fix that. There we go. And... Now in Pronerface, what we're going to do is actually connect to the device. So I'm going to connect, and as you can see, it says COM port 1. So there's an issue right there that we need to fix. In order to fix that, I need to go over to my desktop and search on Device Manager and bring that up. So inside Device Manager, we need to check what our COM port is. In this case, it's three. So to correct that, we're going to close out of here and we'll go back over to Pronerface. And inside Pronerface, we're going to change that value. So that value in this case is going to be three. So now we'll connect. And as you can see, it says connection is now online. So we're going to move the access 10 just to see if it's working. And it does move, so we'll try 100. So that moves as well. So now we'll try the home with the bump offset. So it appears to be working just fine. So it looks like everything is working quite well. So I want to take a moment to Thank you for watching my tutorial and please like and subscribe and for those that have been subscribing on Patreon I'm greatly available and also I now have a Twitch stream that I do on Mondays, Fridays and Saturdays. Mondays it's at 5 o'clock I may move it to 6 o'clock and then on Friday it's at 6 and Saturday it's at 3 o'clock. And these are all Eastern Standard Time. So thank you very much.